All right, hey, welcome back. We're in a new section. We're gonna learn about MySQL. Now, the cool thing about MySQL is that it connects very easily with PHP, and because we just did a whole bunch of stuff on PHP, we're gonna be quickly learning how to create databases in MySQL using a really easy user interface called phpMyAdmin, and then we're going to eventually learn how to use PHP to pull that uh, the, the database information out that we create and display it in a web page. So pretty cool. First thing you need to do is make sure that you have your local server running. And if you're continuing from the previous uh, few lectures, you probably still have your MAMP server running. Now, if you're not using MAMP, you're using something else, the, the, the process that we use in the next few minutes here might be slightly different uh, so what I do recommend is that you use MAMP. However, I'm pretty sure with these other uh, these other pieces of software like uh, XAMPP or WAMP, they I, they also use what's called phpMyAdmin. Uh, but if you want to be sure and follow along exactly as I am, make sure you download MAMP, and that's available for PC and Mac, so you should be good to go. So make sure you got that local server running. Um, in my preferences here, I can see that I'm using the PHP folder. We're going to be um, eventually creating a MySQL folder and working in there, but the, the document root doesn't really matter at this point. We'll change that eventually. What does matter is that the Apache server and the MySQL server are both running, both green and good to go, so that we can access localhost, which we've been using again for our website. A little thing you could do here is go localhost port 8888 slash MAMP, and that will take you to the MAMP um, user interface, and it tells you all about your uh, version of PHP, it tells you certain things, it gives you an example of how to connect to MySQL, uh, and a bunch of other stuff, news, blah, blah, blah. The thing you want to check out is tools, and then click on phpMyAdmin. If you want to go directly to phpMyAdmin, all you have to do is type in localhost port 8888 slash MAMP php my admin like this let me just remove all this other stuff and that will take you to your php my admin user interface homepage. php my admin is a program that lets you create and manage databases using a relatively easy to use ui or user interface the alternative way of creating and managing databases is via the command line or terminal if you're in the mac it requires an advanced level of knowledge in the syntax, and you'll need to know far too many commands off by heart for it to be immediately useful to you. And there's a lot of room for error because you could type things wrong. The cool thing about phpMyAdmin is that it actually shows you the exact PHP and MySQL commands used to create your databases and your database tables when you're editing or, or removing, adding information to it, uh, so that you can begin to understand how to use those commands uh, eventually. But I'll show you a little bit more on that later. So let's create our very first MySQL database using phpMyAdmin. Right here on the left side is your list of databases. You may have no databases here whatsoever uh, if this is totally new to you, or you might be like me and you have just a bunch of just sample and uh, test databases that you've been using for uh, websites and stuff like that that you've been working on. First thing you need to do is click new. That creates a new database or it takes you to the new database tab here. And basically what you need to do is create a database right here. The database name, you just add the name. Basically it just needs to be uh, lowercase underscore, uh, no funny characters, um, no spaces. Just keep it simple. So let's just call it my underscore first underscore database. Leave the collation as is. You don't need to do anything there. Just hit create. Very simple. So your database, my first database, has been created. On the left side here, you should be able to find it. Let me just look through it. Uh, there we go. My first database. Click on that. You can see here no tables were found in the database. So what we need to do is create a new table. Now, databases are built using a series of tables. Think of tables like individual spreadsheets that contain data, like in Excel or, uh, or numbers, where you actually have a spreadsheet with information. That's kind of like what a database is, but tables are individual spreadsheets, so to speak. Databases have multiple tables, um, and they could be things like users, posts, recipes, um, images, 
uh, status updates, things like that. All, the, all of that information is stored in tables in a database. So let's call our first table users. Again, the naming convention, keep it the same as all the code you've been doing, lowercase, you could do camel case, underscores, just no spaces or uh, special characters. Number of columns, let's start with six and then hit go. Now you have six columns here that uh, are basically empty and ready for you to start. The first one we wanna do, and I'm gonna explain uh, what this is as we go through it. So the first one, the name is the name of the column that you want to add. So like I said, think of this as um, a spreadsheet. So we just created a new table called users. So it's kind of like you created a spreadsheet spreadsheet called users. And what we're adding here are the spreadsheet headers. So not the, the data within the spreadsheet, the actual headers of the spreadsheet. So that's what this is going to be here. So let's go ahead and start with lowercase and all this stuff is going to be lowercase id now id is a pretty common convention to add first to all your database tables because when you're working with php and mysql you want to be able to have an a unique id number associated with your uh, database entries and it's kind of just like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You need to know, you know, what entry that is because having a, a numerical value to reference is going to make things really easy down the line. Whereas if you're just trying to find, uh, you know, a user or information based on its its content or its biography or its profile picture, that's going to be incredibly hard, if not impossible, to sort through your database. But if you have an ID, you can easily reference ID number thirty or user number 348. So think of it like that. So name, ID, type. There are a bunch of different types here and don't be discouraged by the massive list here. There's only a few things that you really need to use and I can quickly explain them so you could be up to speed. For ID, we're gonna to want to use int and int means integer. Basically, it's an integer. Uh, the database needs to know what kind of data is gonna be stored here and it's an integer and the number of values, so the length slash values here, basically it wants to know how many characters uh, is this, can this space hold? And the, the average or the default for int is 11. So you really don't need to know much other than that for this. Um, when you're doing an ID, just go int uh, for integer because it's gonna be a number and 11. So basically like 11 digits. It has a maximum space of 11, 11 digits and you won't go over that. You're not gonna have 11 digits of nines. Uh, unless you're super popular, then that's okay. <laughs> anyway, the next thing you wanna do is skip default. You don't need to worry about that for this. Collation, again, don't need to worry about that. Attributes, what you wanna do for your, your IDs are make them unsigned. And why unsigned? Unsigned basically means you're only going to have positive numbers, positive value numbers. It's not going to go down in the negatives. You can't have user number negative 448. You can have user number 448. Basically, it just prevents uh, the database from having any negative values. It's only going to have positive values. Uh, don't check null. Null basically means can this entry be empty? Can you have an empty entry? And for uh, ID, not a chance. You need to have it uh, always have a value, where something like a user biography, if they don't fill it out, that can be null, and we'll get to that uh, shortly. Index, primary. Now, you can leave this out, but it's good practice, especially once you get into some hardcore MySQL programming and you're kind of sorting around databases. Indexes are, or IDs, are most often uh, primary keys, and that's what this is called. So the index is primary. Basically, that means this is the primary key key for this table and PHP in many cases needs to know the primary key of a table in order to access it and get the data out of that table. So your ID is always going to be the primary key and unsigned and A underscore I stands for auto increment and you want that to happen basically every time an entry is added 
MySQL will automatically auto increment to the next value. So instead of you having to manually add, I'm user number 300, it will just know there's 300 users, this is gonna be 301, 302, 303, so on and so forth. So that's your ID. Next up, let's add username. That's a pretty common one, username. And now the type, we want to use varchar. Varchar basically is a variable length string. And it's very versatile in the fact that uh, it, it can hold text, it can hold code, it can hold uh, numbers, but it's basically a string. And we know what a string is. It's in quotations. It's not an integer, it's a string. And whatever's in that string doesn't really matter. Now, the length of varchar has the maximum, uh, the maximum default is 255 characters. Um, if you needed a longer, uh, if you needed longer values or length, then you would use a different type, which we'll get to shortly. Um, you don't have to have it be 255 characters. It could be less. It could be, say, username, you wanted it to be a maximum of 20. You could do that. Or if you wanted to say 100, you could do that. Now, why would you choose one or the other? Why would you add a variable uh, a length at all? Well, the smaller the number, the more optimized the database is. So if you're always saying 255, basically MySQL is going to store that much space, um, going to have that much space available for these entries. And if you have thousands of entries and you have all these uh, these character lengths stored in the database, but you're only using an average of 10 lengths for usernames, then you're kind of wasting space. So if you know that you're not going to have a username more than a certain value, then uh, then you could do that. But if you're not sure, 255 is totally fine. And leave all as is here. Let's go password. Again, this is going to be varchar. You could also choose, there's another one down here, string char. Char is basically, again, um, it's for a string, but it's a fixed length, meaning the fixed, um, if you were to say 255, um, I'm not sure if that's the space that's allowed in char. Yes, 255. Then basically, char is going to store 255 characters. And so um, to comment on what I just said before, where I said if you're storing 255 for varchar, you're wasting space in your database because they might only use 10 characters. Um, actually, basically when you're using varchar, MySQL can see, oh, this username is only 10 characters long. I will only store 10 characters of space in this entry. Whereas char is a fixed length. So if I say 255, every every entry is going to be 255 characters long um, stored in the database. So meaning if you were just to type your, you know, say your username was char255 and you typed your username as Brad Hussey, it's going to be Brad Hussey, but then it's going to have two, uh, the, remaining, the remaining number of values in just white space after that stored in the database. So that's inefficient. So it's usually best practice to use varchar. 255, good enough. Uh, and let's go for email. Again, varchar works good for me. Let's go 255. Now let's use sign up underscore date. It could be sign up date, it could be uh, sign underscore up underscore date, but I'm just going to say sign up underscore date. And here we're not going to use date, we're going to actually use date time down here. And basically, it's, that's going to store a date and a time in the database for when a user signs up uh, or when an entry is added. And we want that because we want to know the exact time and date somebody signed up. If you were just to use date, then it will only store the date and we don't know the time that somebody signed up. So it's, it's just more information to have. Uh, and you can leave all of this as is. And last, we're going to add, let's just add a biography. And we're going to use text. Text is again for a string, um, and it has uh, it can store a lot of characters in here, so you don't really have to worry about uh, you don't have to add a length or a value for that. Uh, so text will be good for that, but we want it to be able to be null, meaning if they don't enter a bio, that's okay. Okay, now hit save. You've just created your database table. Now you can if you click on this, you'll see. You can see here that you have no results in that table because you haven't added any entries. You haven't inserted any rows into that uh, into that table. You can also see over here, my first database, you could see table. You have a table right there. 
And again, right here, you can see the MySQL command, select all from users. And that's, that's a MySQL command. You'd have to type that into terminal, uh, you know, to do what you just did. So basically, uh, th this is where you're going to see that those commands uh, as we go through this. So why don't we go ahead and create a table entry? Click insert because we're in that table there. And now we can add a user. So ID, don't put anything in there because it's auto incrementing. It's going to auto increment a value for starting from one. And it will always do that. You don't need to manually add those. In fact, you shouldn't. Username, you can leave function alone. You don't have to do anything there. Just leave that as is, empty. Keep it simple. Add a username. Let's say Brad Hussey. Password, I'm just going to say my password. And we'll get into um, salting and, um, you know, hiding your password and uh, how, how that works a little bit later in PHP. But for now, we're just going to say my password. Email, you're at email.com. Good enough. Sign up date. You could choose a sign up date like so. But then this brings me to realize that maybe we use the wrong type for this sign up date because when a user signs up, you're not going to ask them, hey, when did you sign up? You want to automatically add that. So date time is perhaps not the right type to use here. This would be something to use if you were to say, uh, book an event and you wanted them to choose the date time that the event was. This requires them to manually add that date time, but we want to automatically find out when they signed up. So let's go back. Let's cancel out of this here. Go back to structure. If you were to click change on your sign up date row here, you can change type to timestamp, which then lets you choose under default current timestamp. So the default value, unless you manually change it, will be the current timestamp of the entry of that um, of that uh, database entry. So save. Now if we go back to insert, let's go back to where we were here. Let's say Brad Hussey, my password, my at email.com. Leave current time, current timestamp as is. You don't have to do any of that. And then feel free to add a, a blog uh, biography here if you'd like, and then hit go. So now it says one row inserted, inserted at row ID three. And it, for you, it's probably one, but I've been fiddling around a little bit. So I am at number three. And you can see here the SQL query right here. Insert into my first database, blah, 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 blah. That's what, what we just did. This is what it looks like in SQL query format. Let's go back to browse. Here we have, here we go, ID user ID three, username, Brad Hussey, password, email, sign up date. You can see the exact sign up date right there and biography. You can edit that and you can change it. Uh, and yeah, and that's how that works. That's how you insert manually an entry into your database table. So go ahead and create a few more users if you'd like, uh, doing the same methods we did. And next up, we're going to learn how to connect to this database using PHP. I'll see you there.